Who was the Whig Party's first president? William Henry Harrison. <laughs> it's actually not a joke, it's a fact. William Henry Harrison was the first president from the Whig Party. He's elected in the election of 1840. But before we get to that, we need to talk about the last two slides of chapter six, the end of the Jackson era or the Jacksonian era. So we are on slide 34 out of 35. All right. So uh, Andrew Jackson wins a second term. That means when the year 1836 runs around, uh, Andrew Jackson is going to be leaving office. Um, and Andrew Jackson wants, of course, a Democrat to replace him, not a Whig. And so he supports his uh, close advisor and secretary of state, a guy named Martin Van Buren. Martin Van Buren and Andrew Jackson kind of had a lot in common. They had a similar vision from the country for the country. Um, they both kind of uh, came from humble backgrounds and climbed the ranks through politics. Um, and of course, both became president of the United States, right? So um, <clears throat> after John C. Calhoun uh, resigns from the vice presidency, uh, Martin Van Buren, the secretary of state, is promoted to becoming Andrew Jackson's vice president for his second term. And Andrew Jackson makes it very clear he thinks Martin Van Buren should be the next president of the United States, right? So Andrew Jackson is still very, very popular. And um, a lot of basically the entire Democrat Party gets behind supporting Martin Van Buren in the election of 1836. Right? Remember, though, we now have a two party system again, right? The Whig Party, which broke off from the anti-Jacksonian members of the Republican Party um, is uh, pushing very hard to take the presidency after Andrew Jackson leaves. So in 1836, the Whig Party comes up with a very bold but stupid strategy to try to, to, try to get the election, right? Um, they know that Martin Van, Van Buren is going to be very popular on the campaign trail. And so their strategy is not to beat him in a popularity contest, not to beat him in the popular vote or the Electoral College, but rather to beat him in the House of Representatives. So the Whigs had managed during Jackson's, Jackson's presidency to get a lot of Whig people into the House of Representatives. So their strategy for winning the presidency is to do something similar to what happened in the election of 1824. Remember that? Um, no candidate won a majority of electoral college votes. And so then it went to the House of Representatives to decide who the president was going to be. And they chose John Quincy Adams instead of Andrew Jackson. Well, they're trying to do that again. Right. So what they do is they run three very different Whig candidates against Martin Van Buren. So instead of having the Democrats running Martin Van Buren and the Whigs running the best candidate they can find to oppose Martin Van Buren, instead what the Whigs do is no matter who we choose, th this person is probably going to lose to Martin Van Buren in the Electoral College. They're going to lose... Um, the popular vote as well. So we're going to run three people to try to convince people who might not like the Whig Party to vote for at least one of these three options, right? That's the strategy. Well, this strategy totally backfires, and uh, these three candidates combined still don't win enough Electoral College votes uh, to stop Van Buren from getting a majority of the Electoral College to support him and Van Buren becomes president, all right? Uh, so yeah, this is a really bad strategy for trying to, trying to win the presidency. You do not want the House of Representatives to be the group deciding who the next president is going to be. All right. So Van Buren takes office in 1836, but the economy is starting to slow down. Now, why is this? There's a couple of reasons. Number one, 
uh, remember, Andrew Jackson killed the National Bank of the United States. Its charter is going to expire very, very soon. So people in the United States who have been relying on the National Bank of the United States to do things like regulate the economy, to issue large loans to businesses and banks and things like that, uh, they're very worried about what's going to happen when this gigantic financial in institution just disappears. Right? Now, remember, Democrats are really happy about this, but not everyone in the country is a Democrat. Right? A lot of people in the country at this time are Republicans, um, or not Republicans, are, are Whigs. And so a lot of these Whigs, a lot of these northern businesses are really worried. Right? Um, <clears throat> So that's, that's one reason the economy starts to slow down. But the main reason that the economy starts to slow down is because the price of cotton, which is produced in the South, drops significantly. And why does this happen? Well, this happens because in England, uh, they experience an economic recession and production of textiles in their factories slows down. And what you need to make textiles, you need cotton, right? So people in factories in England are not ordering as much cotton because they're slowing down their production because their economy is bad. And because they're not ordering as much cotton from the U.S. farmers, that means there is a large surplus of cotton in the U.S. When there's a surplus of a product, what happens to the price of that product? it goes down, right? So the, all these uh, farmers are used to producing a certain amount of cotton, and now all of a sudden they can't get rid of all the cotton they're producing. And so in order to sell it, they have to lower the price, right, in order to get rid of it, right? Well, when they lower the prices of their cotton, they stop making money. And when they stop making money, that means they can't pay the loans they owe to the banks. Remember, a lot of these Southern farmers were able to start their farms or expand their farms or plantations by borrowing money from state banks. And they're not able to repay their loans to the state banks because they can't make as much money because the price of cotton went down. Right? And so what happens? A lot of these banks don't get the money back that they lent out. Farmers lose their farms because the banks repossess their farms in order to pay for the loans and banks go bankrupt, right? So this uh, economic slump starts to snowball and then it soon becomes a full-blown economic collapse, kind of like what we're experiencing now with the coronavirus, right? Um, but back in 1837, it was called the Panic of 1837. Right? And a lot of people lost their wealth, lost their homes, lost their farms, lost their businesses. So people are very, very unhappy. And usually what happens in an election year is if somebody uh, loses their property, loses their home, loses their farm, they're not going to be happy with government leadership. And so they take it out on that government leader by voting for his opponent in the upcoming election. And this is what happened. In the year 1840, Martin Van Buren loses to the Whig candidate, William Henry Hare, the son. Get my joke now? Yeah. Uh, Harrison uh, wins because Martin Van Buren is unpopular because of this uh, economic collapse, but also because Harrison, unlike the other Whigs, ran a really smart campaign this time. Right. So in 1836, the Whigs ran a really stupid campaign. In 1840, they ran a really smart campaign. William Henry Harrison presented himself kind of like Andrew Jackson presented himself. Right. He presented himself as a champion of the common man. He would travel around the country and have like barbecues and like just parties. And he would try to get uh, he tried to get a lot of people who formally supported Andrew Jackson but didn't like Martin Van Buren to switch parties and vote for William Henry Harrison, right? He presented himself as a regular guy, not an elite, right? Not at all like John Quincy Adams, not at all like what the Whig party was associated with. I'm just a regular guy. I'm not an elite at all, right? 
So Americans blame Martin Van Buren, probably unfairly, for the economic troubles they're facing. And Harrison takes advantage of this by winning a smart campaign and wins. The Whigs are in power. The Jackson era is over. All right. See you tomorrow with a review video on your study guide.